Thanks so much for joining everybody today. I have Ace Swirling from Cortac Group with me, and uh, Ace is going to cover uh, the access control domain, specifically uh, level three practice, a CMMC level three practice. Um, but before we get into that, I want to let Ace uh, just introduce himself and uh, just kind of what he does uh, with Cortac. Ace? Sure. Thanks, Sam. I, I'm a grateful for the chance to be here. So yeah, my name is Ace Swirling. Um, I am the Director of Security Solutions at Cortac Group. We are a consultancy based out of the Seattle area that's focused on uh, helping organizations sort of understand their regulatory requirements with respect to CMMC, uh, rally a solution to help them get there. Uh, we are both uh, RPs and C3PAOs, and so we, uh, there's, there's a wide variety of help that we can offer organizations. Um. Let's talk through what organizations may be struggling with or what are the questions people are coming to us uh, and you all asking, hey, um, mobile devices, it's a huge thing, right? It's 2021 and we just seeing it, we're seeing it grow exponentially and mobile devices as a whole, you know, they're, they're getting more and more complicated, right? And, um, and I think the ability to transmit and store CUI and it, honestly, it just flow through devices is uh, more of a reality now, obviously, than it was five, ten years ago. And so, um, as we're thinking about that, you know, let's talk about access control uh, practice three point zero two zero. And this one comes from uh, the NIST eight. I'm sorry, that's a technical practice. This comes from the NIST eight hundred one seventy one control three point one point one eight. And so, access control three point zero two zero. Ace, um, just share how organizations can uh, maybe start preparing for assessments, upcoming CMMC assessments, you know, when we're talking about mobile device management and, um, and controlling the connection of mobile, mobile devices. Sure. So I think what's been really interesting with mobile devices is that because of their mobility, it really turns the traditional security uh, architecture, which has been perimeter focused, that is to say kind of firewall focused, kind of turns it on its head. Because by their nature, these organizations, uh, sorry, these, these devices are floating around in the world. And in order for them to be functional, they're living outside of that perimeter. And so what that means is that we need to apply uh, different kinds of security controls to them. So specifically what the AC3020 control calls for, it has three uh, test cases or sub control you know, one is basically to understand what mobile devices are in scope, sort of. So that's about what mobile devices are accessing using touching CUI. The second is to make sure that all those connections, all those devices are authorized. And then the third part is to make sure that all of those connections are monitored and logged, which of course applies to any of the NIST 800-171 right, and right. CMMC controls. So we can talk a little, little bit more about each of those. Yeah, yeah, and let's let's dig into. Um, I mentioned you know CUI a little bit earlier. Let's 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 dig into um, how you have seen organizations in the past <clears throat> uh, maybe successfully prepare for NIST audits, successfully meet these practices, you know, what, what uh, strategy and, and uh, specific maybe solution sets uh, have you seen that are getting organizations there? Just from a standpoint of if someone's watching this video asking the question, I have no idea how we're going to meet this, right? Um, you know, could you give them information? Let's talk about that. Okay. So even before we talk about the solutions, which, I, which I'll get to in just a second, and it's a really good question, but even before we do that, we need to understand, first off, what CUI we're talking about, the controlled and classified information. So from the fact that people are watching this video, we'll assume that they have CUI. But, but even more than that, a lot of times it's a little bit challenging to understand what the CUI is. So we'll also assume that they know what that is. Um, Beyond that, we need to understand where the CUI resides and whether it may be accessed by a mobile device. So when we say mobile device, let's let's kind of figure, you know, a, an iOS or an Android device living out in the world. Maybe people are accessing uh, the CUI in a SharePoint folder. Maybe they're doing it via Teams. 
uh, Exchange email or you know something equivalent on, on AWS. So one of the real challenges that we run into is that many organizations, even as they sort of lock down and control, say, their Windows or Linux workstations, they tend to forget about, oh, this CUI is residing on somebody's mobile device, or even that it might be on somebody's workstation at home, which is sure. one of the scenarios that we've run into a lot uh, during the COVID lockdown. Right. Yeah. So really, so re realistically, what that means is that very much as we control uh, patching and lockdown and monitoring of, say, a Windows device in a corporate environment, we need to do the same thing on these devices that live outside of the perimeter as well. And historically, uh, mobile device management, MDM, are the, uh, are the tool sets that we use uh, to do that. Yeah, and you mentioned, um, you know, obviously the shift to remote work and work from home, uh, it's not necessarily new to anyone now. Um, but, you know, even, even if you're at home, let's say you get up to take a walk, right, and you go outside and someone sends an email and you're on your phone, you're, you're no longer on your device at home, right? Um, and then you get home and you go on the back porch and now you have maybe an iPad that's work assigned. And, you know, it's just the, the possibilities are really so endless, um, right? In a good way, technology has just advanced so much. But at the same time, it's like there are so many mobile devices, you know, we're talking about possibly three to five devices per user now. And for, you know, organizations that are larger, even midsize, um, that's a lot of mobile device management, right? That's a lot of controlling. And, you know, at level three, uh, we all know, like you said, we're going to assume that if people are watching this, they understand what controlled and classified information is. Um, but, but this is a, this is a big one, right? And that's, that's one of the reasons um, we wanted, you know, you to cover this because there's so much experience there and, and, um, I think it's it's one of those pieces that um, you know Cortec is is experienced in, and at the same time, I think you know as we see upcoming assessments, as we see upcoming level three assessments, um, there are going to be different ways to meet it. Right? It's defining and understanding, um, and you know, feel free to share about those different ways to meet it. You know, there's not way one way to skin the cat, if you will, in this in this scenario. Um, but yeah, could you share a, bit, a little bit about that? Sure. I so I. Going back to the the bit about you know um, managing these devices. So historically, you know, organizations have managed their devices. They've patched them through maybe uh, you know Microsoft shops have patched them through maybe something like SCCM, right? right. Or they have uh, locked them down. They they've applied configurations through maybe something like uh, GPO Group Policy Object on Active Directory, but neither of those platforms were designed to work with mobile devices. They weren't designed to work with um, those operating systems, those control sets and all that. So we really need something else. Um, you know, so many of the organizations that we work with uh, tend to be Microsoft focused. Um, but the idea is that that is one of uh, the, the, the service you know, is Intune is available as an Azure and or uh, Microsoft 365 service. And basically what you're doing there is you're setting up policies very much like a GPO saying, okay, I, I am going to require a six digit code uh, to unlock a device. And I'm gonna require it to be encrypted. And I'm going to require certain things to be in place before that device can connect. So through the mobile device management, we there is a registration process which meets that first sub-control A, where we know what devices are in scope, right? So it's registered just like, say, a, a Windows or a Linux workstation would be. That's right. And then we also address control B by making sure that that policy is applied and checking for that application, making sure that that policy is in place and that the device is um, looks good before it's able to access any of the controlled unclassified information. So there's kind of a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down to it. 
Yeah, and, and I know we had previously talked about Zero Trust, right? Microsoft Zero Trust and talking about conceptually um, maybe how this normalizes access control um, in, in workstations and mobile devices. Can you speak to that a little bit too? Sure. So Zero Trust is an interesting concept. As far as I know, it really started at Google. And the idea was that they recognized that, uh, as we as we just dis- just discussed a few minutes ago, that the network perimeter has less meaning and less value from a security perspective than it used to. Um, and so they decided to get rid of their network perimeters and run all of their devices, all their corporate devices, uh, on the internet. And to manage them, regardless of whether they're Windows, you know, Windows Linux, you know, those traditional workstations, thin clients, mobile devices, all that, they're all going to be managed through mobile device management. And in that case, what you're doing is you are effectively setting up a firewall on each individual device, right? So that each device ends up being protected, and the MDM system ends up being a control plane that allows you to manage that distributed environment um, regardless of device and regardless of where it stands. So the perimeters end up being on the devices themselves. Uh, Microsoft as a company has adopted that as well. And it's really kind of considered, uh, you know, one of the, one of the leading edge concepts, uh, you know, in, in the security space. It is interesting though, that we have a little bit of a dilemma as we drill into zero trust. We have a little bit of a dilemma in that the CMMC controls actually want organizations. This is a this is not the AC three zero two zero control, but there's a there's a CMMC control requiring uh, no split tunnels for VPN mm-hmm. or uh, or other uh, encrypted channels. And so what that means is that it tends to, it, it can tend to complicate some of the zero trust. Um, so, you know, Cortac is, is very familiar with working through some of those subtleties and we can help organizations uh, work through that. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you for sharing. Um, you know, I, I think we more or less covered <clears throat> uh, that, that control and a little bit more and, and I appreciate your insight. Is there anything else uh, just from an AC standpoint, um, or just from an ace rolling standpoint, that you'd like to share? Well, one thing is I, I want to make sure that we cover the last control, which is about monitoring and logging. So a lot of organizations will log these uh, ac- this access, but they don't monitor. Yeah. And monitoring ends up being actually quite important, um, and and quite a bit of a challenge because they are. It, it finding a bad guy is a bit like finding a needle in a haystack. And the way that you find them is by looking for malicious behavior. There are many organizations that have been breached and they don't discover it for two, three, six months, 18 months. Um, and monitoring is really, really important uh, to facilitate that. So, um, you know, yes, lock down your devices. Yes, understand what they're doing. Um, but also monitor their access to ensure that uh, that the process hasn't been subverted. Yeah, that's fantastic. Great point. Great addition there. I'm glad you added that. Um, well, fantastic. So thanks, everyone, for, for watching and joining. Um, Ace, we appreciate you uh, and thankful that you could cover this. It's extremely insightful. Uh, we hope this is helpful. Stay on the lookout for more videos in this series. Thanks.